All right there, ladies and gentlemen, JD here again. Uh, so we got this little knife that we carburized. We can autofocus, there we go. Um, so we, last time you saw it was the YouTube short that I created. Um, and the surface was dotted with blisters. Actually, I think there's kind of still evidence of one right there that I didn't grind out. But, you know, we're going to leave it just as an artifact. Um, but I used my little 1 inch by 30 inch belt grinder and uh, cleaned the bevels up. I, sorry, I heat treated this. Um, we quenched it in hot peanut oil and then I uh, used my belt, a little one by 30 belt grinder to um, reestablish our grind and get it to a sharp edge here. I did not temper this yet, uh, but that is hard. So, carburizing mild steel was a huge success. Even, well, it does dig in a little bit here on the tail. Obviously, I didn't quench the, the tail, but case in point, it's still the same bar of steel, and this end took a fantastic hardness. Couldn't be happier with that. Um, by comparison, just so you don't accuse me of having a dull file, here's a piece of it's one of those railroad track spring clips. These are 1065, which is a high carbon steel. I've analyzed these myself, and yeah, you can you can definitely hear the difference. These are tempered way back to be a spring, um, so they're not terribly hard and just take a lot of shock. Uh, here's the punch that we did, a little center punch. So this was a really fun piece. Um, I forged this just real quick and dirty on a Saturday night uh, out of rebar. I think it was 3 8 rebar. And I love forging hexagons. They're challenging. Um, it's almost impossible to get them, you know, perfect uh, where all six sides are the same. Um, you know, same width and everything like that. Very challenging. This one's not even, it's not perfect, but still I just, I love the shape of a hexagon. I like it better than a square, certainly better than a square, and, and better than an octagon. It's just a preference thing. It's nerdy, I know. Uh, but anyhow, a convenient part about having uh, a forged hexagon is I recently acquired, as you guys saw, a machine lathe. And the machine lathe has, uh, it came with two three jaw chucks. Well, you can't chuck up a square in a three jaw chuck because the degree of separation between each jaw is 120 degrees. Square is obviously 90 degrees. Well, so you can do uh, multiples of 120. So our, oh, that's actually magnetic. Our hexagon here is 60 degree sides. And so we can chuck this up perfectly fine in a three jaw chuck. Um, and in doing so, I was able to machine this. So that's the first time in my life I ever forged a part and then machined it. And uh, yeah, couldn't be happier. I set the compound slide to match the taper and yeah, the results are just beautiful. It's obviously harder than Chinese arithmetic, right? That's that is a fantastic, fantastic punch. Again, none of these are tempered, um, so I'll do that um, off camera, but figured I'd show you the result of that pack carburization or blister steel. We've got ourselves a fantastic knife here, great edge retention. Um, I guarantee you it'll still be super hard even after tempering it. Um, yeah, you can see there was a little artifact of delamination there because I did a whole bunch of forge welding here and I wasn't very particular about cleaning all the scale off so I knew there was going to be some contamination but it was literally a quick and dirty project that I did on a couple nights at my friend's shop. Uh, so anyhow, thank you very much for watching. Really hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something from it that you can forge a beautiful little knife like this from stinking mild steel. You don't have to go out and buy high carbon blade steel. Um, people will say that it's a waste of gas to carburize something, but why don't you just put it in, uh, oh yeah, I forgot to explain how I did this all. Um, so I have a piece of one inch square steel tube and this would fit in there at, you know, on the diagonal and uh, obviously the punch too. And I got a bunch of crushed up charcoal 
and it's just pine charcoal. And uh, basically what I did is I welded a bottom on this section of square tube. It was probably six or seven inches long. Um, I probably put about, you know, an inch, inch and a half of charcoal in the bottom of it. Then I dropped in the knife and the punch and then continued to fill it all the way up, kind of knocking the sides of the can so it all settled down into the voids. And then literally kind of packed carbon in there, charcoal rather, into, uh, into the can. And then once it was good and full, I welded a lid onto the canister. It's really the same exact practice as folks who do canister Damascus steel, like uh, Green Beetle. He's a popular YouTuber, and he, he does an awful lot of canister Damascus. Um, same concept, except uh, you know the can is the same concept, but the, the major difference is obviously we have steel and charcoal instead of steel and steel powder. And so when it comes to opening up the can, piece of cake, popped open the can and took these out and I saw all the blisters that you guys saw on the uh, YouTube short. So that's how we did it. And it was in the forge for three hours. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, at a friend's shop. He has a local hammer in every Thursday night. And while my canister was sitting in the forge cooking, there were other kids there who were forging projects, making knives and uh, one guy's making a couple bottle openers, stuff like that. So it really wasn't a waste of fuel. Um, that fuel was going to get spent anyhow. And I forged a steak turner myself for the barbecue grill since it's that time of year. So totally not a waste of fuel. You just leave that in there for a while while you're forging something else. Totally practical to do. Uh, it's most sensible on a propane forge because you can get a good you know, uniform uh, heat across the whole piece. Whereas if I did it on my, my coal forge, you know, obviously I'd have a very localized spot. I wouldn't have a uniform heat across the whole thing, and it wouldn't be as convenient to, uh, you know, to have other forging work going on at the same time. Um, so propane definitely has an advantage there. Um, of course, if you've got a heat treating kiln, oh, that's even easier. You can fire that thing up. Yeah, that is kind of a waste of electricity, but you can turn the thing on and leave it while you're doing other activities in your shop. You get the idea. So thank you very much for watching. really hope you guys enjoy this content. Uh, most importantly, I hope you learned something because that's what I, I've gained a lot of that from YouTube and it's time to give back, right? I've, my entire craft of blacksmithing started from YouTube and so I'm giving back. So hope you guys enjoy this sort of content and hit the like button and uh, subscribe to my fledging little channel here. And we'll catch you on the next video. Bye now.